Hi, this is Kathy Goodwin with MidlifeCareerStrategy.com. Today I was reading some articles from the New York Times and I came across one that had some very dangerous career advice. So I thought I would share my thoughts on this with you. This is part of my series, Straight Talk About Crooked Careers, and I'm going to encourage you to never, or I should say never, but avoid advice from the corner newsstand, even if it's a quality paper. Let me clarify the difference between advice and information. You pay for advice. Information is free. The reason is that advice is something like, I think you should do X. If you pay for advice, you will get someone who is objective, who is your advocate, who in any, any form of ethics has your interests at heart. When you get advice from someone else, even from someone in the newspaper, you're dealing with someone who probably has an agenda. And we're going to see shortly, journalists do have agendas, even in articles presented as objective. Information can be free. If you go to networking events, I encourage you to get information. I also would encourage you to read the newspapers, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, your local paper for information, but be aware that it's often reported inaccurately and it can be biased as well. So this was an article about, they called it middle age careers. Oh, I, I would prefer to say midlife career change or mid career advice, something like that. But the first bad advice was they, well, they didn't say offer to work for free. That's almost always bad. The exception is if you want to work for a nonprofit, most nonprofit executives have done a stint as volunteers. They got hired from volunteer jobs into managerial jobs or sometimes even clerical jobs and got promoted from there. If you want to work in a nonprofit, that is not a bad way. If you can find a, a freelance a nonprofit opportunity to be a volunteer in a recognized volunteer program that has a track record, you're more likely to get promoted into something in the organization. Or this article suggested that you offer to work on a special project at a discount. I would really question that advice because a lot of times companies don't want to outsource a special project, especially at a discount, because they have to deal with their HR. They have to take care of their own people, their own preferred vendors, and you are now competition. You, your first step on this is not to offer to work on a special project, but to go out and network and find out where the gaps are. Maybe you can prepare a portfolio to take with you that you could use instead of creating a special project for a company. Second bit of bad advice was, your challenge is finding companies that hire project-based whatever and connecting with them. This was an answer to a question submitted by a college professor who wanted to find seasonal employment in his professional field in the summers and during breaks. Well, it's a great idea, except first I would say do some research. Find out if there are indeed profession, professional project-based jobs in this industry and where are they and what do they look for? because you, it's very hard to connect without having done quite a bit of background information. And you have to also think about what are you willing to work on? Because sometimes projects aren't necessarily timed to fit your own schedule, in this case, an academic one. Now, really horrendous advice was, this was someone who was a writer, who had been a journalist, who claimed he made a quote, adequate living, didn't sound too enthused. He was finding the jobs were drying up and he wanted to do something else. So the columnist said, okay, apply your writing and storytelling to creating website content. Be the go-to person for web copy in a field, such as small law firms, and work with a designer or take a course and do the whole thing. In other words, deliver a whole website. That was my reaction. Ouch. Because I also work as a website copywriter. I know website design. I can deliver the whole project and I would be really concerned about this advice. First, web copywriting calls for different skills from journalism and other kinds of freelance writing. I am a published author. I have written all kinds of articles for newspapers and I've written just about everything from newsletters for companies to case studies to textbook sections. I've written everything. But 
when I decided to work on the web, I took courses in web copywriting because copywriting is a special skill and online copywriting is even more specialized. Second, some people need copy but won't pay for it, especially small professional firms. If you're saying target small law firms as an example, I'd be really careful because I have talked to people in small law firms and they tend to be very, very careful about how they spend their money. They also are careful who they work with. You really have to establish yourself. That doesn't mean you couldn't do that, but you need to go through these preparatory steps. But what concerns me is the columnist is saying, oh, just jump right in. You try and do it and realize it's not working. A coach or a consultant, someone who you hired, will walk you through the steps so you won't get blindsided when you say, oh my God, that's what the columnist told me to do and it's not working. And finally, you cannot just take one course to be a web designer or even a copywriter. Web design, yes, you have to learn Photoshop. That may be one course. You usually need a lot of experience to use it. But you have to learn design principles. You have to learn how people are using design. Now, that doesn't mean you couldn't just study it on your own. Certainly, we find high school kids and college kids who just go out and do it. But it's something I would say one course usually doesn't do it. Those people either really don't get really the big money projects a lot of the time, and it's not just one course. So my conclusion is that newspapers want upbeat, optimistic articles. Believe me, I know. I have been interviewed by newspapers, and I love it. But when I, for example, I get asked something like, what are the five top fields that you recommend to people for the next year? Well, I don't think there are five top fields. That's bogus, but that's what newspapers want. So depending on my mood, I may say, you know, I can't do that. That is bogus. It's misleading people. Or I may throw something out there and, and just keep my fingers crossed. But I usually don't. Second, journalists rarely are familiar with the ins and outs of specific fields. They know about being journalists. Unless they have someone they are close to in a field, they won't really know the ins and outs. And you have to do your own due diligence. Often advice is too vague. I mean, that's what I'm referring to when they say, go connect with a firm that places people at the high end in this area. Well, I, you know, that's fine, but are, do those firms exist? What are they called? Are they recruitment firms? Are they agencies? What are they? Where do you find them? That's research. And you really either figure it out on your own or you hire someone to guide you through it. This is this talk on being careful about getting advice from the newspapers has been brought to you by Kathy Goodwin, me, and my tagline is straight talk for crooked careers. Please join me at midlifecareerstrategy.com.